Yeah, we're not going to have to wait for the Shall we chuck We require our illustrious leader. You guys know how to play. Who can't lift it in the other hand? Nobody's got to the room. I'm lowering the equation to 19 to the No good.
I don't like that corporal over there leering at me. I think he fancies me. Where's Ensign Taylor? You're supposed to be taking care of this, Ensign. Is it a bad lot you've got here? Are there unruly troops? Absolutely. Just Unbelievable. Where do you recruit these guys from? Where from, are they? From any, anybody that's warm, Peter. Anybody that's warm. You might do. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's my cause in this struggle? What, what's what? your cause in this struggle? For your sovereign. To recover your rights George the as Third. a British citizen. George the Third, who, who was not necessarily the most respected of British monarchs. Uh, respected by who? By history. By history. Yes. Well, history's abused the man. Yes. And, and actually, <laughs> seeing this is going to be edited, <laughs> do you know what George III died from? I believe that he had uh, uh, hereditary syphilis. Uh, one might say that. The king. <laughs> the king, gentlemen, the king. God bless him. I am a monarchist. <laughs> so, the king, he's our hero. Gavin, I want to ask you who you are in 1780 in a minute, but tell me who you are in 1980. In 1980, in, in three words or less? No, go, go 25 <laughs> if you like. Uh, I uh, work in the packaging industry, and uh, I uh, have uh, this mob of people that work for me. Okay? And they take care of all the business. This is going to go down, isn't it, Duff? They take care of all the business, and I just play at being an officer of the king. And this is in the city of? Toronto. One of the king's good cities? One of the king's good cities. But I live in King City, where an officer of the king would be expected to live. Well. Yes, absolutely. And your interest in what you're doing here this weekend stems from where? Oh, a uh, real interest in Canadian military history. From childhood? Uh, almost. I had two uncles that were in the service, and they used to regale me with all these stories. Unbelievable stories, much to my father's uh, displeasure. Did you, ever <laughs> did you ever serve in the military yourself? No, but I had a lot of association with the military. And in 1780, you were yes. kind of the king here. You're kind of the boss, not the king, I'm sorry. Oh, by far, not the king, sir. <coughs> <laughs> but you are in command. In command. Uh, temporarily, uh, when we're on the field and the troops want to behave, then I'm in command. Uh, when we're off duty and they don't want to behave, they just don't. Right? <laughs> Your rank they have a mind of their own, believe me. <laughs> Captain, lieutenant. It's an archaic rank. Um, it's a rank, uh, what they call neither fish nor fowl. You uh, rank as a captain, the most junior in the battalion, but you're only paid as a lieutenant. So you have all the mess bills of a captain, or a, yes, all the mess bills of a captain, but the pay of a lieutenant. Everything here is utterly accurate, isn't it, including that rank? As much as we can do, as much as we can do. But I have fillings, Peter, which I, I won't open my mouth, and then we won't see them. Bad they, teeth were a historical fact. Oh, factor. absolutely, absolutely. You wouldn't be such a handsome lot in those days. Uh, oh, definitely, but they would have been wooden, or perhaps cow's teeth, or lead, or something like that. And it wouldn't have been my own. <laughs> Can you give me some examples of some of the intricacy of detail to which you go here? Uh, some of the interesting things that happen. We have a number of, of individuals in the unit that are actually descended from the unit. So we have fellows that are descended from officers in the unit, fellows that are descended from privates. But I guess the most interesting story of all, when we got going on this back in 75, uh, I was the president of a gun club, and uh, there are a number of gun collectors in the club. So. I was absolutely sure that this one fellow I'd known for all these years would have to be in this thing, see, because he was a really superb Canadian military collector. So I phoned him up on the telephone and I said, Bruce, you've got to be in this thing. And he said, oh, geez, Gavin, I don't know. I don't know what my ancestors did. I know that they fought at Chrysler's Farm in the War of 1812, because they're right on the monument there. So I said to myself, says I, John Chrysler, he's in the colonel's company of, the, of our, our battalion, so I'll just look up. Bruce Strader's ancestors. Okay? So I go through the muster rolls, and we had decided we were doing the Colonel's Company at that time. That's before Bruce came in. And I go through it, and there it is, his ancestors right there in the company. And he wears now, Bruce Strader wears his ancestors' number, because most of our equipment is numbered, right now today. And then, then the ancestor's brother was also in the company, and so Bruce Strader's son, Philip, he has the, the other, the uncle's number. So he has A50 and A32 in the company. And the uniforms are utterly accurate? As, as, as much as we can make, to the extent that just feel the weight of that. That's, 
Yeah, I, that's I, 24 ounce, 100% wool. It's just, it's unbelievable to wear. I've heard that with all your gear out there on the battlefield today, you were, you probably were carrying on the average 30 to 40 pounds each on your back. I would say so. And then when the men went into combat, they were wearing over 100 pounds on their back, and our our unit would carry 80 rounds of, of musket ammunition with them on, on a campaign like we're on today. And it was just un it's staggering because they marched everywhere, hundreds and hundreds of miles. It's got to be a labor of love for you guys. A labor of love for us. Great dedication. Where, who are these people who are with you? What walks of life do they come from? We have absolutely everything. Or really, seriously, absolutely. Uh, for fellows that uh, are, are professionals, prof a lawyer, or uh, and we have the fellows that are working for the government. We have just absolutely every cross section of life. It's, it's phenomenal. And what do you think you all get out of it? Is it possible? It's a, to well, say? for one thing, it's a military unit. It's an amateur military unit, but it's a strong esprit, regimental esprit. And so, consequently, it, it, it's just like belonging to a unit without having all the pain and agony of being dirty all the time. You can have a shower every once in a while. Not allowed too often, but you can have a shower every once in a while. And so, consequently, they get all that camaraderie of being in a, in a military unit. And then there's a little bit of, uh, for a lot of the guys, this, this real zeal that comes with, with portraying Canadian history, which really isn't known to anybody. And people don't really, when we say we're the King's Royal Regiment of New York, and we're in Toronto, and everybody says, New York. We have Yankees. We have just, oh, we just, because oh, that's the foundation of Ontario. Explain that just briefly. Well, virtually all of the Loyalist units that, that fought during the war, and there were, there was 30,000 men under arms that were all in these Loyalist units. So the ones that fought in the north, they were disbanded in Canada and settled parts of the eastern townships in Quebec, settled down in the, the north end uh, at, the, at the mouth of the Richelieu in, in Champlain, and then they settled all the way from the, uh, the Ottawa River right over to Quinty's Isle in, in Ontario. So all of that area there was settled by disbanded northern Loyalist troops, and then the southern Loyalist troops, the guys that had been raised sort of in uh, Massachusetts, had been raised in lower state New York, the Carolinas and all that, they came back and they settled what was then Nova Scotia. That included New Brunswick at the time. Of course, Ontario was part of Quebec at the time, going back to that scene, and then split later. So all these, these troops were from, they were all American, they, in our sense, the Canadian sense of what an American is. He's a guy that lives south of the St. Lawrence River. Okay, but these were all Americans too. So when we say we're a New York regiment, it's really as Canadian as Canadian can be, because it was the start of the whole thing. This state where you and I, two Canadians, are sitting is a great breeding ground for, uh, for Canadians. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, what you must, as you walk through the 1980s, as you do, get a little ribbing or well, lots of comments. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What do they say? What do they? Well, they don't say much, Peter, because I'm a violent man. <laughs> <laughs> Long look. I have a lot of troops behind me. But you get a lot of it, sure, a lot of ribbing. But that, that, as much as one would expect. Um, people might think you're foolish, but they think you're harmless. And you know, that's, that's really the, the key to the whole thing. Is that, and, and we have um, events just actually pour in through the mail. It's unbelievable. You don't have to go out and solicit events and things to go to at all. They just pour in through the mail. You're invited to go to take part in battles all over the place? All over the place. So next year, we hope to go to Yorktown, Virginia. That'll take us two days to get there, two days to get back and we hope to put the unit on the field. But Yorktown, you see, was the, the, the finish, as it were, of, of the Revolutionary War. And uh, at that stage, the French had really put a lot of troops into North America on the side of the Americans. So the French, together with the Americans, and it was about even Stephen, they defeated the British and the Loyalists at Yorktown. And that was the death knell. The government fell in Britain and the whole bit, and it, it, it reversed it. So our regiment is going to have to go down there. We never lost a battle in all the time that we fought in, the, in, in New York State, which was then New York, the rebellious province of New York. We never lost a battle. Now we're going to have to go down and surrender in Yorktown, Virginia. Now the fellows are saying that maybe we might have to change history a little bit. <laughs> maybe we just might have to change history. You say people say you're harmless, but do you ever get people coming up to you and say, hey, look, you guys are glorifying war. War is hell and all of this. We get a little bit of that. Um, do you think you are? Well, in the fact that it's colorful and it's military, yes. I suppose it's a glorification of something that happened. Uh, but no, I, I don't look at it that way. I, I think that far more, it's far more important 
from the point of view of, of bringing a sense of history to our country. And we are abysmal in a sense of history as Canadians. I, I think Canadians just haven't got a grip on, on, the, on all the joy that's there. We look on American history, and I, I think most Canadians envy American history. They really are envious of it because the Americans know how to handle it. They know how to promote it. They know how to give this feeling of heritage. Canadians don't seem to have a grip on it. And we think we're doing our little bit to, to change that, to bring it around. So I don't think we're glorifying war. We're glorifying the roots of the country. That's really what I think. Well, I think you're a great promoter, too. Okay. Now you're joining? You're going to take the shilling? <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> it's at the bottom of that glass? It's at the bottom of this glass. Here you are. <laughs> Thanks for talking you're with me, welcome. Good. Thank you. Stacy, a lobster, no ricochet. Another lobster. Oh, John, three shoes. Come on, Jimmy. Box. He's a lawyer. What does he expect? Dirty trick. Come on, Gore. Very good. Oh. Are you gonna turn again? Yeah, I got to turn again. Try it, boys. You think you can? <laughs> okay, start again. It's my turn again, sir. <laughs> oh, no. His father called him a cheap hiney. It doesn't count. Seconds You're okay so. for white too? You're then okay when for white? Yeah. It, are we supposed to cheer wildly? Hey? Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Is it, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. 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 Anytime. Yeah. 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 You don't have to hit it. Just imagine that she hit it because I don't see it. I'll do another shot of that being hit. So we we'll need to like it. Quick now. Quick. Come on. Quick. Okay. Hurt. 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 Hit it this time. Okay, I just want to get that. Whoa! 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 Okay, he's got to get somebody hit it. No, we'll we'll get it from here. Okay. okay. How was it placed? Okay. Just just sit it there. And drop a rock on it. <laughs> okay, and we'll come. You really want to hit? Why did I touch it? Can you believe it? No, I won't get it. You Frenchman, you know how to Okay, that's right. Oh, like yeah. Could you back off a little bit? Right We're going to need it. So right here. Okay. Don't be here. Here it comes. Here it comes. You ready? Hold on. Say when. And go. Great stuff. Okay. Color party mounts on. We should have been in the same Yeah, but not now. They were gotten on that bus. Color party right now. Color party. Call on. Right back. I'm going to come around. Oh, we have to check our gun before we go in? I'll start doing that little bone thing. Hi, blue eyes. Hi. Yeah. Got it. Oh, 
You guys are on TV. <laughs> Do you want to have a runner go over and ask the officer with regards to the fixed bayonets? Because we're talking about it at the officer's meeting this morning. Yeah, that would be a good idea. What is that, Who wants to volunteer to go runner? over? Go see Gavin and see if we should fix bayonets when we do the flanking movement. Thank you. You're welcome. We have a runner for that. What's that whirring I hear in my ears? Whir, whir, whir. <laughs> you get that thing out of my face, you sure guts. <laughs> hey, you can't interfere with freedom of like press. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it this way. Let's I can probably set up that musket over here. Yeah. Michael, do you have a wooden flint in there? It works good. Yeah, he does. It lasts a long, yeah. long time. Okay, and yourself, Bill, as well? Fine. I was just checking the muskets. Bottom. Okay, good idea. Now, how, is there anybody here who does not have battery covers? Battery covers. Okay. Uh, I could probably set off that. This is musket from over here. Mine is clean. Okay. All right. And you won't mind bringing it over here, right? Okay, does everybody have sufficient what? cartridges what now? Oh. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, hey, so Tommy. Yeah. Tom. Tommy, get your gun. Prime and load gun? Yeah. Yep. Bust us up! Indian file. Indian file. Excuse me, could you put the cigarette out and stay there maybe for us? 
Or just, or just hide it somewhere. I was the one who okay. said put it out. Stand by. <coughs> Count the 10, Peter. Put it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. 8, 9, 10. Okay, okay, stand by to start in, in 3, 2, I'm in the historic Mohawk Valley here in New York State, a place that hasn't changed much, or at least in the way it looks over the years. But 200 years ago to the day today, there was a battle enacted here near a town called Stone Arabia. Indeed, 200 years ago, there were British troops on this very hill, troops loyal to King George III. And they were lying in wait for American skirmishes, militiamen lying just over the crest of this hill. Ten I made a few stumbles. I'll no, just try and make it work. It was, the delivery was bad. Stand by in five, four, three, two. I'm in mean, the Mohawk Valley, the historic Mohawk Valley in the middle of New York State, standing on a hill that probably hasn't changed too much in 200 years. Indeed, 200 years ago, this very hill was the site of a battle, the Battle of Stone Arabia, the name of a town that's near here. To the right and to the left of me, there were British troops, troops loyal to King George III. And just over this hill were American skirmishers, militiamen, looking for the British troops. Like, that's I'm why rolling? I want close-ups of feet and stuff. Are you going to be in this? No. Oh. I suppose I should be. Yeah, since you're already. OK, stand by to go in five, four, three, two, one, go. Can you just go by me, just the way you just did? Okay. Just go, just keep walking, crawling? Yeah, the way you did. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Back down. They take off, and we are then to form up and put on a little demonstration for the crowd, which will take a little bit of organization. But I think what we'll do is we'll fire a food de joie, or we'll, better even yet, we'll fire three volleys of celebration so that nothing goes wrong. Food de joie have a habit of going wrong. But we'll fire the three volleys. Now, the, you have, all of you who have been in the three volleys should remember the drill on it. Is there every first, the first command you'll get prime and load. So we'll have unfixed our bands and we'll prime and load. And then you'll get uh, the, the long spiel that uh, we will now fire three balls of celebration to commemorate our victory uh, in Stone Arabia. Make ready. Present. It's a high present. Fire. Don't let the muscle down. Fire and hold it. Right? Ring the bell. Newton. Yes. Okay. Then you get prime and load. You come down. You do the whole thing back off the shoulder. Make ready, present, fire, hold it, prime and low. Do the whole thing, back up to the shoulder. Make ready, present, fire, and then shoulder fire lock. Say, say again? Is there any reason why we can't uh, cross the fence, fix bayonets, and yeah, then fire a couple yeah, of volleys going just, down? There's so many people against even fixing bayonets, let's not ask for an accident. So we won't fix until we're across that fence. No, but I'm saying that after we've fixed, is there any reason why we can't fire a couple of volleys as we're going forward if it looks as though we're a long way to go yet? Yep. No, we can always do that. Okay. Just had to mention that that fence, that that fence is not very... It's going to have to be with them. Oh, no. About the center of the unit. Okay. 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 Good play. 
Can we do that quick before they die? Yep. Oh, do you want do you want Gavin and then? No, the you order? you just can you just give the order for them to start? Because I don't know how you can. Be most confident. Though. Gavin. Now, do it. Okay. So. Um... Listen, I'm going to fire one. If you get them all ready, when I present, you guys fire on my round, okay? I see their heads. Okay, pretend I'm the front rank. Ready? You rolling? I'm rolling. I see their heads. Come on, hurry up! 
Jim, over here, to the right. They're gonna fire. First ones. Jimmy, to the right, quick.
Right in front of you, Jim. Right in front. Right in front of you. Okay, dress between me and the colors, 64. People are dressed. Oh. Dressing, gentlemen. Brigade! Halt! 64. Get fired. Show the off, Firelocks. Nick, ready! 
Treason! Fire! I'm done, I'm sorry. Prime and load!
prepared to go into column from line. That is four men at a time. Do I count up the four, I hope? To the left, wheel! <laughs> close it up, close it up! No, 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 no. Second division. To the front, march! To the right, wheel! Jim, you're rolling now. You're rolling now. Yeah. Through the trees. Through these monsters. I just want to see the shot of the tail and the shot of the body. Hurry up! Keep your Framing with the rock. a Niagara. Sergeant Major, move the section down here. Lieutenant Anderson, we'll move the company into line with the right section across here. Sergeant Frost, bring your people out from behind the York Midnight. Prepare to all. Right section. Ah! Rush! Up in the fire! Nerd! Okay, I'm 
Size, throw him back. Undersized, throw him back. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> All right. Rest on the rock there. Sit on the rock. Yeah. Watch the rock for you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. Yeah, you want some water? That would be a good idea. My bottle's empty. from the original King's Royal Yorkers, Sir John's Regiment, right here. Just waiting to get back at you, like you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you are. Please feel free to come in and ask questions. <laughs> Troops, you're dismissed until we form again. <laughs> Any of the uh, public like to go over to the boulder? If you want to follow me, I'll lead you over. Yorkers! Yorkers! Right, Sir John. Never lost a battle, Bob. John Day. Yeah. Are you still rich? Maybe you're just putting on. You run too fast. Oh, no. 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 Thank you. 